honorable speaker uh, dr ak mishra and uh, the other dignitaries joined uh, in the panelist uh, with me the deputy director of northeast science and technology center professor l lalit singh so our proceeding today will be uh, I, i will i will be introducing the speaker and then the speaker will be delivering the lecture followed by the participants uh, if they have any query any questions they can put on the q and a box they can put their questions after the lecture is over then uh, will be taken up and those queries will be clarified or can be taken by the and some of our panelist uh, maybe professor l lolit singh he will take up and then will be clarified by the speaker and followed by the award of thanks before i introduce uh, our honorable speaker may i request dgtm sir to say a few words thank you professor tiwari uh, this is probably the second uh, lecture in the series that we had thought that uh, mizoram university and drdo will put together few lectures to commemorate uh, azadi ka <laughs> yeah so uh, the speaker today is very eminent person within the rdo he had lot of uh, work done during the pandemic last year and uh, he has worked multi at multiple places maybe you, when you introduce him you will be mentioning all that uh, cancer is something which is actually relevant to at least the knowledge of it is relevant to most of the people here because it's very painful experience if there is any cancer patient in somebody's family or uh, people known to them so therefore uh, any knowledge of this particular topic will be very beneficial for uh, the society at large and of course the researchers will gain through the discussion uh, i thank uh, dr uh, mishra to take this appropriate topic to enlighten all of us and i must also thank uh, mizo university the vice chancellor and the uh, our uh, center director professor tiwari for uh, uh, initiating enabling this uh, seminar to happen so thank you all the participants as well because without participants no seminar can take place uh, with that uh, i hand it over back to professor tiwari thank you sir thank you very much uh, uh, may i now request uh, Uh, Shri Patak sir, if you say few words, then. Uh, sir, uh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, please, uh, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, good morning to all of you, and uh, this is a actually very good. Uh, like proactively, our center NSTC is basically uh, planning uh, these lectures under this. Uh, 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 Amrit Mahotsav 75, and uh, our uh, participants who are there, uh, who are joining this, they will be benefited out of this lecture of our Dr. A. K. Mishra ji, director in Mass. So with this, I, I just uh, request uh, Professor Devakar sir to go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. This is I am uh, privileged of uh, introducing. Uh, Dr. Mishra, uh, this is the Northeast Science and Technology Center, which is established in Mizoram University. In the, you know, far uh, away, I will say that it is, you know, at the remotest part of the country in the Mizoram and Central Mizoram Central University. It is located in that. So we have initiated the first already. We have done, and this is the second uh, lecture series under the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav that we are celebrating under that. this is the second lecture uh, when we requested uh, dr mishra immediately he responded and he said that definitely i would like to deliver the lecture and his topic is of course very relevant and very interesting topic that he has taken uh, that is the chemical uh, entities as theranostic of the cancer that is related to the cancer so honorable vice chancellor sir has joined sir uh, before i introduce uh, i would like to request honorable uh, vice chancellor if he wants to say say hey, good morning sir a uh, good morning sir good morning sir say hey, good morning sir 
Yes, sir. Would you like to? Yeah. Hello. Sir, yes, sir. Can you able to hear me? Yes, sir. We are able to hear you, sir. Good morning, sir. Mishra ji. Good morning. Very good thank morning, you very sir. much for good accepting our invitation. Good morning, on the screen. <laughs> good morning, Mishra ji. Accepting for our invitation and. Uh, a uh, very interesting topic and the way people are actually many people are appreciating because i am outside lot of disturbance uh, besides me <laughs> uh, uh, construction is going on near uh, where i am staying hello yes sir uh, i am not able to hear anything <laughs> okay sir okay it sir it is actually some construction is going on and uh, uh, it is actually uh, um it is a wonderful topic sir and i uh, thank you very much and i good morning uh, shivasu ji and good morning patek uh, dr patek ji uh, for arranging this webinar program series of webinars uh, um, uh, and uh, enlightening us sir. it is uh, because no uh, i just joined i will talk to you later sir i will i will okay. be listening <laughs> sure okay sir sure. and lot of disturbance is coming sure sir thank you sir i'll continue uh, dr mishra we all know during the covid second wave time and he was the key person behind the 2 dg to deoxy d glucose and all uh, that is you know the medicine for the uh, this uh, covid patients and all and uh, we have seen that during the covid time we have sir we have seen you in, uh, in tv and all that th those days and uh, day night your uh, contribution for the nation during the second wave and covid time so we all remember and that was the remarkable you know and uh, if i introduce him dr mishra obtained his msc degree in uh, chemistry 1984 from the gorakhpur university and then he did his phd from banaras hindu university in 1988 He, he just cleared 1988 and then i joined 1990 sir so he was just senior to me uh, they are in uh, manaras hindu university and then during his illustrious scientific career he has held positions as post doctorate fellow at university uh, that france research scientist at university of california usa senior scientist at uh, insam u463 nantes france and visiting professor at max planck uh, institute in germany Dr Mishra joined in Mus uh, Delhi in 9th July 1997 and worked in the division of radio pharmaceuticals his research interest include molecular imaging agents radio chemistry specific mr contrast agents optical imaging agents coordination chemistry synthetic chemistry radio pharmaceuticals and bi conjugate chemistry a vast experience he has behind at inmas he has contributed towards the creation of the state of the art infrastructure for advancing the area of radio pharmaceuticals and nuclear imaging which is known as the molecular imaging and research center mirc the focus area of the mirc is towards translational research and product development for early detection of diseases to pave the way for development of newer strategies for personalized healthcare services for armed forces he has created lot of you know the facilities at inwas the center is an example of a hub where scientists and uh, clinicians work in harmony to contribute to the field of molecular imaging it has received national and international acclamation and has been able to carve out a niche for itself with many uh, successful international collaborations dr mishra has more than 300 papers on his own credit at the international reputed journal so multiple us european and indian patents on his credit he has he also has affiliation to several professional societies to name a few he is a fellow indian college of nuclear medicine and a member indian college of nuclear medicine he has worked as a consultant with the international atomic energy his professional membership include american chemical society world molecular imaging european association of nuclear medicine society of nuclear medicine and chapter society of magnetic resonance imaging society of nuclear medicine india and so on he is the recipient of the young scientist prestigious drdo young scientist award 
by the Prime Minister of India in 1999. So he has a very vast experience. May I request uh, Dr. Mishra, please go ahead, sir. Uh, very kind of you, uh, Professor Tiwari, to introduce me. First of all, uh, uh, I would like to offer my gratitude and uh, uh, respect to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Rao, sir. Uh, he has been a really guide and each time whenever I see, uh, he doesn't miss a, any tweet, any uh, WhatsApp, any uh, Laurel comes to his university, he shares with us. So it's really something we, we learn from him. He's a really uh, good mentor and guide. Uh, our respected uh, Director General, Technology Management and uh, Professor Silvastro, sir. Pathakji, Divakar, sir, and colleagues, participants from uh, way viewing us that what we are going to share today. Uh, I chose this topic, cancer, there is a two reasons behind. One reason behind is that the highest number of cancerous cases of nasopharyngeal that we talk about oral cancer is Mizoram. So that's why I chose this topic because if you talk about the oral cancer, the maximum contribution is from this Mizoram. And that comes that we have to really tackle how we can tackle. Uh, before going to this really a topic which really near to dear to us to work upon it, I would like to say a few things about it. Uh, must read the book by uh, Siddharth Mukherjee. Uh, it's a very nice book that emperor of all, all maladies, either the disease that we talk about is the cancer. Uh, I say it's immortal. Why it is immortal is that when Sidney Primer, he talks about that uh, he was treating at that time the pediatric patient that they were suffering from the cancer. And today, whatever the modern chemotherapy that we have been doing is the genesis that comes from uh, his contribution because he has given fact, he has given fiction, and he has given a direction and future to us to work around. With this, there are many centers on his name and one of the center on his name that is Cancer Institute, Dana Kramer Institute in the Boston, uh, named by his name. His contribution is enormous. Whenever you read the book, whenever you read his articles, you really get mesmerized at how to work in this area. With this, colleagues, scientists, everyone is working in this area that how we can see it, how we can repair it, and how we can treat it. And doing that, today I would like to share that some of the case studies that how theranostics, either theranostic that we talk about, the contribution of the different discipline of sciences work together to really overcome, either to see that this kingdom of cancer is destroyed either weakened by some way, by some being. If you look at this one, I just try to put two, uh, uh, the pillar, uh, we always talk in the terms of agonist and antagonist. And if you look about them, these basic scientists and clinical scientists, they always work in isolation. And that's why we say agonists and antagonists. What we try to do being a basic scientist is that to bridge the gap. And if we bridge the gap, then certainly we'll be able to avoid the death valley by the disease, either any kind of disease that we talk about. So the bridging the gap between basic and clinical science scientists are very important. And that's why we see that who can really do the chemical reaction entities that can bind between the both and that becomes a theranostic of the cancer. Uh, we are really blessed uh, by electromagnetic radiation. Whenever we talk about electromagnetic radiation, we say that we are rich in many, many things. Starting from any technology that we talk about today exists in the world, either in material science, either in physical science, either in nuclear science, either in chemical sciences, any field you talk about, you can really extract the information from this electromagnetic radiation to design the tools to detect and to treat. And that's why we, we were the group of people to exploit it for the medical application, where we try to see the radio frequency, we try to see the optical, where we try to see the extinction coefficient, by using the Lambert's field law that we talked about. And then finally, we try to see that what type of emission that is in the sub angstrom that we talk about in the femtometer uh, size that we talk that can be become very powerful, where size does not mat matter, what matters is the energy. And keeping in this view, uh, electromagnetic radiation, and then 
uh, chemist and then the researcher, they really looked upon in the periodic table. And the periodic table guided us that you select the elements from the periodic table and then elements, either the metal, either the nucleides, can be utilized for the different application. So keeping that in view, what we do at our institute in DRDO, we try to accelerate the particle, and with the, by accelerating the particle, we try to perturb the uh, N by P ratio, and by perturbing this, we produce the isotope, and that can be hard work, that can be utilized for the different application. So I, I feel very proud that we have one of the best centers in the country to accelerate the particle and particle to do the solid target to produce the isotope. And this isotope can be really uh, incorporated to some of organic moieties, in organic moieties, either some of the moieties that can be utilized for the clinical application. And by keeping this, we have a center where we, we house our entire system to, to run it. And that's why we say that we are, we are rich in this to, to produce the isotope for the different technology. So you see that uh, we can produce all these isotopes at our center that doesn't exist in the country. Uh, that can be uh, given to the different center. Region behind is that these are having very uh, excellent radiophysical property that can be harnessed for the application that we thought about that we'll be re reading in the consecutive slides to share with you. So I will take a couple of examples in this one to share with the participants and to the faculty that what we try to, to build in this one. Just look at my this slide that I have taken three uh, cartoon over here in the, my completely left hand side that we try to do organic reaction. And sometimes when teach, when we take the classes, we say that organic chemists, they are very powerful. That is the on the top of the list in the chemical sciences, but it's not like that. It's the chemical reaction. We do the chemical reaction to see that how we can monitor it, how it progress, and how it makes the physiological molecules. Just look the middle, that is the coordination compound. Why I put this three structure over here is to tell that all the chemistry, they are parallel and they are very useful for any application that we talk about. In the middle, you can see that this is one coordination compound that we talk about, 99M technician, whose server is suffering from any type of cardiac disease. They have to go with this molecule to get the scan that how the status of their cardiac functioning, either the cardiac is working, either any kind of interruption has taken place. The third panel you can see in extremely right that we try to see the physical phenomena by doing the relaxation study that how T1 and T2 monitors for any chemical reaction, either any moiety belongs to any category you talk about, either is physiological molecule pulse in the category of lipid, pulse in the category of proteins, either in pulse in the category of nucleosides and the DNA. They have their own retention time, own rotation time, own relaxation time, and this gives us this signature that how we can really design a molecule to see the perturbance at biochemical level. You can see in the, in the bottom that if we perform some tasks, many kind of things get fluctuated, and that would like to really trap at the real time scale we can talk about in the picosecond, either the fraction of millisecond, that what is happening in the brain and to see it. To see it, what we have to do is that we have to really see that what are the pathways that follows. You can see about the panel of the reaction, panel of gadget of the, uh, the pathway that goes around, that one pathway that we were talking about, that the glute receptor where chlorodeoxyglucose is being developed, is being exploited, for the clinical application for detecting the cancer because most of the cancerous cells are heavily dependent on glucose and that was the genesis to design 2D oxyglucose for the virus because they are also dependent on bioenergy. So to shut down to the bioenergy, we try to mimic it. We mimic it so it cannot propagate, it cannot go further, it cannot phosphorylate and after that it doesn't go to the next reaction to make any kind of metabolites for the application that we think about it to generate the energy. Similar way, what we try to do is that we try to play in place of 2 deoxyglucose we try to make the chlorodeoxyglucose, and that is the work hearts of the entire world to see any type of cancerous lesion located anywhere in the body to visualize it. 
but that is not the only solution because there are many pathways you can see in the channel. You can talk about the choline kinase, you can talk about, you can talk about any protein synthesis, you can talk about hormonal regulation, either you can talk about any kind of kinase. So the tumors are solely dependent, the pathway are completely different because some tumor, they are dependent on glute, some of the dependent on protein, some of the dependent on nucleosides and the DNA. And that's why it becomes our duty to design the molecule to see the lesion located in the body, wherever we want to see, and then after that to plan the treatment. You can see in the extreme right, uh, in, the, in, in the bottom that a, a, a person is on a tumor mode that we know what we inject. We inject something you can divide uh, three milligram, something with 340,000 strides, and what we inject to get this image. So you can see that the, from the concentration point, even you cannot determine. It's only one can measure by some of the pathway that is called that radioactivity to see that what is the count coming later on. And this gives us the specific activity to, to really define that how the molecule has been designed for the application. If you look at the first case studies that I wanted to talk about, that where you, one of the nucleosides that we talked that is thymidine that get really multiplied number of time. Reason being is that they are heavily dependent on and they need it to, to develop and to proliferate. So when they are proliferating, we try to see that we try to mimic in such a way that I put some isotope and there's some tracer technology on this one that when they take this thymidine, either you need either the base pair, either the nucleosides, then we are able to track it. When I was reading this paper uh, to, to make these case studies for today, I find very interesting one of the application of this besides the cancer and tumor, this molecule can be very nicely used. So I think there is some problem. Yeah, he's trying, I think. Yes. Sir, it's not coming, sir. Sir, slides. Light is not visible as well as it is muted. Yes. Now it's coming, but not the full screen. Yes, now it's fine, sir. But you are muted, sir. Sir, unmute yourself.
Yavakar, can you hear us? Can you see us? Sir, we can we can hear now, but uh, slide is uh, not in full screen. Okay, now it is going to be in the full. There was some yeah. uh, interference in the line. Now it is visible. So yes, uh, the best part is that uh, uh, whatever we do, we do ex vivo because Barbie is one of the dye that we use for any marker either to see. So that's very good in optical imaging to see something ex vivo. But what we want to see any perturbance, even any DNA multiplication, either anything that would like to see in vivo at real time. So for that, what we try to do is that we try to develop the probes. And in this, what we try to do, we try to make in such a way at some of the three prime and the five prime position to institute, in, introduce a linker, and that is not metabolizable. Why we want to introduce this one? Reason behind is that we can really increase the retention time till that its kinetics and dynamics are defined and it reaches to the target. So this is the one synthetic scheme that I'm sharing, that what we try to do is that we try to introduce the alkyne group where we can certainly see that by the partner reaction to, to develop that a click chemistry in a very quick time, time scale. Reason being that the half-life of these radionuclides are very less. This is starting from two minutes to two hours. And that's why we try to see that in a minimum time uh, scale, either time frame, we are able to perform the reaction at, at the microwave by doing a very mild condition, you can say about uh, isolated by some of the catalysts. So you can see that we are able to really monitor this reaction uh, by doing it the different pathway. And then finally, we see that what are consumed in this one, the conversion rate, we try to calculate the kinetics, that how fast it is getting, and when we can quench the reaction. And by quenching the reaction, then what we can do is that we can isolate the product, purify, do the quality control, and goes for the clinical application. So doing this, we try to monitor by the different uh, methodology. One of the methodology we do that, we do the kinetics by using NMR spectrometer, where we try to, to, to consume by using some of the uh, crown ether, where we track this uh, molecule and to, to facilitate and to do the reaction uh, by doing the uh, carbon 11 chemistry. And this, you can see that the formation of this azide is very important. And once we know that this conversion has taken place, then we try to do the click chemistry. By doing this click chemistry, you can see that very nicely, we are able to see that when cells are proliferating. And you can see uh, one of the images that developed by these nucleosides, either this molecule that we talk about in the thymidine. Uh, then you can see very nicely the tumor in the brain. And that is the main objective to see. It. So one issue you can see that the entire brain where tumor cells are proliferating, we are able to visualize it. And that is the beauty. And that is the molecule first time in India was developed at our center in mass in GRDO. And that was the scan for gamut of patient all over the country. Now this technology, we have transferred at different places. Now a couple of centers in the country they have been doing. So you can, see, you can see that this tumor is not dependent and it cannot be visualized by chlorodeoxyglucose, either the glucose molecule, because they are dependent on heavily on the nucleosides, either in the thymidine dependent. You can see that by developing this, also we try to see that these molecules can be the marker for the small molecules and we, we can follow their treatment modalities. And that's why what we did before treatment, you can see that the contrast is very high on the top. And then slowly, slowly treatment of the first cycle and the five cycles, you can see that the red zone and the yellow zone has disappeared. It means the contrast is going, it means the cell proliferation is being really controlled and is been killed. So whenever we do our imaging, we try to do the treatment. After treatment, we try to follow that this Procedure is being followed. We do not need to do the 30 cycle, either 50 cycles, either six cycles. This can you can really control by loading the drugs, which is already toxic in the nature. So you can see the two properties of this. You can visualize, you can follow it. So, but what is the way forward in this kind of system? So what we try to also see that uh, if you do the therapy and then you want to see that the complete remission has taken place or not. So we try to, to do the pre-therapy and post-therapy after two weeks and the certain cycles. And you can see that in six months, all the tumors have been disappeared on the upper panel. But if you look at the lower panel, they are very resistant disease. It means that even if you load with the chemotherapy, they are not going to respond. So then we have to change the modalities. 
We have to change the therapeutic modalities rather than loading with the chemo, either any, any type of uh, the treatment that we are going to give to the patient because we are loading with something which is not required. So this is very important for us to, to see the therapeutic outcomes by this one. So what we try to do way forward in this direction in the case, case study is one that I was talking, that first to, to, to really diminish its toxicity, because then you, have to, you can give any many cycles that you want to. So you can, you can see that three prime and the five prime, what we have done, we have done the liquidization. That is very important for us to develop in such a way that they can also penetrate, they can cross the blood blood barrier. And also the active side where we want to see that we can do the chemistry in such a way that we can load some of the system where you can develop the theranostic. It means I can put the nucleide, a nucleide which has got both type of emission that you can have that beta negative either beta positive. And that's why we have introduced in extreme, right, you can see that in real white, what we have done is that we have conjugated a chelating system. That chelating system is going to hold the middle line very strongly under physiological condition, and that will be used for the clinical application as a diagnostic. This molecule is developed at Invas. Now clinical trials already in the process for this molecule to, to see that what is the outcome for diagnostic as well as therapeutic application. So this is the one case study that I wanted to share for the treatment of the brain tumor, which are very dangerous. They are not able to take a very nicely. I take the second case study that when you do the organic radiochemistry, where we try to make the many precursor, many synta, many reagents that are very essential, they are poised to react to the molecule to develop. So you can see that we try to make, make develop something uh, lithium-based, you can say organometallic, uh, where you can do that, electrophilic and nucleophilic reaction. You can make the iso nitrile derivative of this one. You can, you can make the nitro aldol kind of system. Then you can have different uh, cyclization, reduction, amination by making triphosphate phosphine. Either aldehyde, that you can do the sheep based reaction, either you can cotonize very nicely any compound. So, what we have done is that at our center, that we have developed all these precursors, all these synthon. They are ready to react the moiety where you want to introduce the carbon element to visualize it. And that is the one thing that we have done very nicely. You can see that why this molecule was developed at our center. That is a very simple molecule that is called methionine. And that what we have taken is that we have taken the homocysteine and done the reaction by doing alkylation by methyl iodide in a very nice way. The idea behind this one to develop this molecule is that the children and young adults when you do this type of imaging and the treatment, if the half-life of the radionuclides are very high, they are going to give the radiation burden. And that is very fatal for the kids, either for the children, either for the young adults. So we thought that let's modify in such a way that half-life is only 20 minutes. You can do the imaging, and after the imaging, the kids are out and they can uh, really not give enough uh, radiation. And then you can discriminate very nicely that is a radiation necrosis, either it's a viral tumor, and then physician can take a call to, to remove, either to treat it. So this is a very important molecule, a small amino acid. You can see that that molecule can be used for the clinical application. You can see it's extreme in the right, is a very nicely shows the tumor. But if you look at the MR uh, uh, contour, where you cannot see where is the very viral tumor, where surgeon can put the knife to take it out. You can correlate very nicely by spectroscopy that what is the fluctuation by taking the biopsy to know that this is going to respond and that this is not going to respond with the system. Uh, this is a very important uh, slide that I wanted to share that most of the patients, they go for the FDG scan, which is the only available in the country. And they come back, you can see the my second slide, second uh, cartoon after the whole body image, the chlorodeoxygen course. Very minimally, you are able to visualize it. It means that when they will see the physician, they will say that there is no tumor. But if you look at the methionine on the third slide, third cartoon, where you can see the very dark patch in there, and that dark patch says that this is the breast carcinoma of the tumor, which was not visible in the chlorodeoxy glucose. Then clinician can take a call that this should be treated, either this should be updated, either this should be taken for the further uh, management. So it's very important for us to, to develop the molecule that can be used for the certain application that we want to do. But this is only diagnostic part that I have been talking. But what is the way forward we think in this one? Way forward, what we try to see that we try to 
do a, a kind of reaction. And this reaction, we try to do the organosilicon compound. In organosilicon compound, we try to introduce some of the fluorine to you can see it. But at the same time, this fluorine can be substituted with organometallic compound that is called astatine. That astatine 211 is the alpha emitter, and that can be used for the therapeutic application. So by that, you can certainly design the molecule that will be theranostic, you can see, as well as you can treat. And this molecule, again, develop at in mass for the clinical application. And already we have done many cases with this molecule. <clears throat> I wanted to take to the journey in a different direction. This was the only nucleosides we are talking about. We are talking about some of the amino acids that are very important workhorse for utilization for the clinical application. What's about the metal ion? How they really behave like a uh, agent that can be used for theranostic application? So we always try to see that which of the twin uh, nucleides in the periodic table they behave similarly. So if you look at the gallium 68. If I use a diagnostic application by using gallium 68, and then they will not be really matching something very close to the gallium 68. So what we try to see that from electronic configuration point of view, from uh, radio physical point of view, we try to take the yttrium 90 and lutetium 177. Those, these two radio nucleides are purely beta emitter. So whatever results we get from the gallium 68, we can visualize it. But the changing the nuclei, because they are always uh, enjoying the plus three oxidation state. In this plus three oxidation state, if I change the radionuclides from gallium to yttrium and lutetium, my coordination number is not going to compromise. And my structure is not compromised. So I'm, I'm going to load the uh, emitter that is called beta negative, and that will be used for the clinical application. Likewise, you can see in the extreme right corner, I have introduced the copper 64 that we are going to produce recently. We got a project from our headquarter to, to have the mission mode. This copper 64 is such a beautiful radionuclease that enjoys two types of system in the same nuclei. Means it, we have got the 30% beta positive and 70% is the beta negative. It means that by loading the molecule with the organic moiety that takes to the recognition site, binds there, visualize, and then after you can treat it. You will see some of the beautiful uh, spectra and beautiful nature of this copper. Copper has got more than 100 isotopes. And these 100 isotopes, they are uh, varies from their radiophysical property. What we try to see that, we try to harbor the copper 64 out of this. And then we have a gadget at our center to, to produce this copper 64. And that's why the copper one and copper two is very important molecule for us. And then why we want to choose it for the application that we are we are proposing and that we have been working on it. You can just look under this cartoon. Uh, any 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 molecule that we conceive, we try to see that what is the pathway, how it is taken to the cell, either where we want to send it. So you, you can see that copper is absorbed on the surface of the cytoplasm, and then we have got the ferric reductase that try to reduce from copper two to copper one, and then is taken by the FRE two protein that you talk about the transporter, and that is the copper transporter. You have got three four types that is one either two either three, and is taken to the vacuum where you can really impart the energy to to see either to to treat it, and that's why we say that copper dependent ex uh, expression either again we talk about metallothionines that right now we have been looking in the covid virus and this type of system that copper sensor how they are going to destroy it so this molecule is very important for us to design something based on the copper 64 either any copper isotope that we feel comfortable we can work the copper 64 is selection because of beta negative and beta positive the two type of system that we have got so you can see that in this transporter we try to see that how this is being taken from transmembrane to the vacuum where the copper one is reduced by the very uh, reductase and then it goes and binds to the different chaperons that we talk about by the cytochrome c oxidase that we talk about but what is the most important for, for us is that when we talk about this copper transporter protein as the receptor, how it is being taken so strongly the copper, this study is very important for us to know that. So then when we look about the binding pattern of this copper one, either copper two, we find out that there are several amino acids, several moieties which are very important for holding the copper very strongly under physiological condition. 
So then you can look at the method in history, either system, they are the motive that bind with the copper, besides that the lysine we talked about more, and then that is the sub inside and it goes. So if you can imagine that if you have a copper and then it, you know that it binds in binding pattern from aspartate, either alanine, either histine, that I have taken the reference from the biochemistry uh, published long time back, but you look at the structure and looking at the coordination chemistry, looking at the challenge with the protein, other proteins, they also enjoy the similar type of structure. So if I send the copper from outside, which is not stable under physiological condition, will be taken by the other protein and my entire objective will be destroyed. So what we try to do, we try to determine the stability constant and by stability constant, we come to know that this molecule if binds with this copper, then other protein cannot take it. That is the challenge and that we try to do it. And that's why what we did is that we have developed a different, different uh, type of system that is called uh, N-substituted and the C-substituted macrocycle, enjoying the tetra uh, Asia type of system at the 12 carbon chain, either 14 carbon chain, this macrocyclic system designed where it holds copper, any isotope, extraordinarily, uh, in compared to the any protein that we talked about. And then we have got the second arm where we can do the bioconjugate chemistry to put the protein and the put the molecule where we want to send it. You can see in the next slide that very nicely what we have done is that modification using thiourea linkage where we have exploited by using NCS dichisothiocyanate to take it. And very quantitatively, you can modify any, any antibody variable regions, either the constant region, which is responsible, either you can take the epitope where you can conjugate and you can deliver at the site. So you can see that this molecule by using two types of linker that you can see here. One linker that you can see the thiourea, other linker that we have got directly that is the peptide linkage and the amide linkage. Amide linkages are very susceptible to uh, carboxy peptidase is digested by the enzyme. If it is digested by enzyme, again, the copper with chelate will be out and antibody will be somewhere else. Then it will not be reaching to the target to see it, either to treat it, either to increase the retention time. So it's very important for us that what type of linker that we are going to introduce to hold entire uh, gamuts of uh, radionuclide, either radioligands, either the radio complex that we have developed and that it goes to the site without cleavage and without alteration its property. So you can, you can see very nicely that we, we have to develop the uh, a different model in, in, in animal and we have to graph, graph the tumor and by grafting the tumor positive to negative, we can say that this binds very positively, very nicely and that's why one of the system that we call is the number one creator for the copper is that para-isothiocyanate of the derivative of uh, uh, tetraezocyclotetrodecan and is modified with the, one of the para -amino, amino acids that we talk about. And then we load it, this one, for the clinical application. Very nice results that at the different time interval. In the collaboration with the, the Swiss guy that we, we did this imaging at their center, this imaging, the imaging part that also we are having at our center, we are developing slowly and slowly. So whenever we talk about the era that we start from, diagnostic era, then we used to see it by doing the chemotherapy. Either we try to do the surgery, we try to burn by radiotherapy. That era is gone. That era is not going to be talked about. It was certain certain years till uh, you, you can talk about 2005 and 2006. Now the era has come as that theranostic era, theranostic era, where you have to design starting from a molecule that is T's without changing the electronic conformation and configuration that goes and binds by giving the radiation of your desired uh, uh, radiation uh, by choosing that you want to give the alpha therapy and you want to give the uh, beta negative of the treatment. So if, if you look at the entire uh, pathway, either the roadmap is starting from 1973 to 2010. Now, a lot of changes has taken place in the therapy of the cancer, reason being that many tumors, they were not responding. Many tumors were not visualized. Many tracers were not there to see. It. Now we are in a different mode that we have uh, gametes of either the, you can say the portfolio of the uh, tracer that can visualize the different type of the tumor. So I will, I will take one of the another example in the amino acid that we talk about the peptide that there are three targets in these three targets either you talk about target one where we talk about homoisin either you talk about the calcium either you talk about the somatostatin 
There are three targets that we try to see. But why we want to see this target is very important because most of the kids right now, they're suffering from the neuroendocrine tumor. And if you are not able to visualize as early as possible, then you can see that apoptosis, growth hub and proliferation, and then finally, you know, the end, end result, what is going to happen after the transcription. So what we try to do is that we try to see that how somatostatin mechanism is that works about. And this SS receptor that we talk about somatostatin that goes in the different pathway, either the calcium channel, either we talk about an emulate cyclase, and then finally the hormone secretion is very important for the function, mostly in the endocrine uh, system. And then we, we try to see that where and which type of receptor that we can mod modulate. And if you look at the inhibition, and the induction of the cell, we have got the different type. Either you talk about somatostatin 2, either 1, 2, 4, 5, either 2, 3, which one is very important and, and is overexpressed uh, type of the tumor that we want to see. You will be seeing in the next slide is such nicely first line expression of the target. You look about the anything. You talk about from pituitary adenomas to ovarian neuroendocrine tumors. This is the classification that we have got. And you can see that in any type of tumors that you talk from pituitary to ovarian, you can see that somatostatin is the target which is overexpressed. And that's why we thought that we have to develop the molecule that really recognize the somatostatin receptor without changing its biological activity, and we are able to really see it and to be able to treat it. So you can see that the contribution from successful target that we have got the somatostatin angiogenesis. We'll be talking only somatostatin today. Today, uh, we'll talk sometime angiogenesis that we have done uh, enough work on this one. So octreotide, lendrotide, and PRRT that we talk about, peptide radio receptor therapy that we are going to take in the consecutive slides to talk about that these are the very beautiful target. What chemists we do around this one? We try to modulate this peptide, which is naturally occurs, that is produced by uh, pituitary and endocrine system. When we look about the biological half-life of this peptide to get the info that it is only two minutes. If I have to do the chemistry and to resend it for the targeting, which you can see in the end, in the middle of my right-hand side, that how it goes and binds to the receptor. Till reaches it to the target, it's completely destroyed, it's killed because it's only two minutes. What we try to do is that we try to introduce some of the amino acid and the sum of the linker that we have like the amino acid and we have like the peptide, but it's not recognized by enzyme to do the proteolysis, either to digest it. And then in this scenario, we try to, to do a lot of modification by changing some of the amino acids from L to D, either putting a linker, which is not really a natural amino acid, it becomes unnatural amino acid. And likewise, by doing that, you can develop your radionuclides that from the periodic table, you can have the small molecule two nanomaterials, two optimers to load it very nicely. What I'm going to share is that what we try to do in this one is that we took this neuroendocrine tumor where somatostatin receptor expresses very highly. And then we did the modification of this octotype, loaded with in the beginning with 111 indium. That is one of the uh, gamma emitters to see GTP is a very old work that we had done sometime in 96, 98. But now it has really complete tra transition from this one. And then we moved to the completely with the gallium 68 that I was talking about. So we try to see it by seeing, then we try to change from gallium to lutetium, and you can see that the tumor on the top, which was visible, was completely destroyed after therapy. You can see that how they respond it also. You can look at this uh, gallium dota, that is one of the chelator conjugated to the peptide. In my left-hand side, you can see the number of tumors in the red zone, where is the heart, and then you can see completely in right, only in the three cycles, most of the tumor, they have dis disappeared. You can, you can see in the SPECT imaging, either you can see in the whole body imaging that how it is completely reduced. This is the one of the example that we talk about that how you can develop this theranostic molecule for the different application. Keeping this one that why to left out neuro oncology because the tumor you can see that is located anywhere and everywhere. So what we try to see that what we should synthesize and how they should work for any type of neuronal loss, neuroinflammation, neuro oncology. So today we'll talk about something which, which is going to be neuro oncology in this one. And we try to see that what is fluctuating at that time point when something is, I'm performing the task 
either I'm doing something, some fluctuation is taking place. That fluctuation, can I measure it? And if I'm able to measure that fluctuation, then I can reach to the target and then I can destroy if some perturbance has taken place. Look at this, the, uh, we talk about uh, any synapse. You look at the synapse structure and just look at the size of the envelope of the synaptic cleft. If you look at the size, this is in the nanometer. And if you design a molecule which is in a, in a, in a, in a micrometer or either something like in, 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 a, in a centimeter or something like either molecule of the bigger size, then they will certainly not get fit in the envelope and they will not be transported to the exon to reach to the site. So we have to be looking at this one that what is the size of the synaptic left and then what are the targets that we can derive from it and then to design the molecule accordingly. So this, this, this part that we generally try to do for the neuro because we work in a center where we have to see that what are the impact that is going to decline our cognitive power either to decline that we are, we are having a problem of neurodegenerative diseases and to see that which are the neurons that they are really uh, taking these molecules and they are taking to the to the to the region where some perturbance has taken taken place either pre synapse either the post synapse to alter it and to see just i would like to see one example over here is that if you take about the serotonin that we talk about that you look about only two percent one to two percent of the serotonin body is in the brain rest is distributed everywhere so you see that the importance of this serotonin that whatever are uh, trying to see from the cognitive point of view, either to any neurodegenerative diseases, where alteration we can do from the chemical point of view to see that this is very powerful for us to see that. So what we try to do that, we try to see that how many types, sub types of the receptor that we have got, like we talk about 5-hydroxy tryptophan, we have got 26 type of receptor. But we have to do the docking, that is called molecular simulation. We try to see that which molecule fits very well with the one of the receptor that we want to target. And then once we get the leaf from this by many permutation and combination, we try to synthesize this molecule. And then we have come to a molecule, which is very beautiful, dimeric in nature, you can say homodimeric in nature, binds in the nanomolar concentration, better to whatever known in the literature. And then you have the site where you can do very nice nucleophilic reaction because we have got our silicon where we did first 19F by loading to do the NMR spectroscopy, and then we completely did the exchange reaction, either the any tertiary butyl group with H that is lying there, we were able to introduce and to see that. You can see such a nice, beautiful images that we published long time back, that we wanted to see that my molecule reach to the basal ganglia, and you can see that it's very nicely located at the side. And this, is, was, this was the one objective that we wanted to see and to achieve that we are able to reach in the brain. Once we reach in the brain, then it comes out that how we have to work on this one. It's very beautifully, very nicely. What we did is that uh, uh, we were able to, to, to load fluorine, and at the same time, we were trying to exploit the silicon 29 NMR. It means now what we were thinking about that either what is now coming uh, in, in the market, either everywhere, is always a hyphenated and hybrid technology. In this hybrid technology, I only work on about one tracer, which is chlorine and the radionuclides is not going to serve the purpose. We have to see that it is optically active. And then also we have the optical properties. We have the magnetic properties and we have the nuclear properties. The three property is incorporated in the one molecule and that can be the really working hard for us. So you can see that you put the chlorine, you are able to see the F uh, is very nice distribution in the basal ganglia. At the same time, at the site, if you have a very good coil, that is radio frequency coil, you can see the 29 silicon NMR that the molecule is available at the site in, in vivo. And by doing that, what we try to see that, we have got a uh, system, in, you, you can look very carefully at this cat. This cat has got two types of eyes. One eye is to see the resolution, one eye is to see the uh, you know, specificity. So that's why we always say that why we have to have the hybrid system because we want to have the very high specificity, we want to have the very high resolution, and that's why we develop a molecule. And that molecule you can see can discriminate between radiation necrosis in the scenario of any whole cast we talk about, and then any tumor which is proliferating. And you can see in the MRI in the first panel in the images, you are not able to discriminate it. 
But in the second panel in the middle, you can see very nicely there is some black spot. It means there is some tumor, either some alteration has taken place. But in the end, completely you look at the two modalities together that we are in the process to acquire a mass. That is called MR. In this, you can see that yellow jet means where the tumor are proliferating and they are very active, and then you can put the needle to take it out, either to suck it, either to destroy it. So what I want to convey over here is that when we try to do something very nicely, is one plus one is equal to not the two, you can get the third information, and that third information is very important for managing the tumor, either any type of disease that we talked about. With this, I thought that just being at uh, in the chemistry at the Mizoram University to see that how, NMR spectra has been exploited for the clinical application. We try to see the resolution. We try to determine the chemical structure. We try to see that how my molecule behaves in the different environment. You see that how nicely the molecule that we design, that is called contrast agent uh, by the chemist, you can see the images in the brain for any track, any fiber, which is moving very nicely by injecting it. So for this, we have to really design the molecule by based on the carbonium that is called lanthanide shift reagent and the contrast agent and chemistry expect if you don't uh, hold this metal ion very strongly under physiological condition they are very toxic in the nature so what we have to do is that we we have to wrap it very strongly to avoid the toxicity of this molecule what we try to see that we put a kind of a crab like a structure to hold the metal ion very strongly putting two sensors they can sense the biochemical designing this what we try to also do that uh, inversion recovery that the T1 and T2 property that we are able to see in the fraction of millisecond, either the millisecond that we talked about. And this is very important for us to, to do by NMR that when is re recovery of the signal is taking place. And this recovery can be done with the function of pH, function of time scale in, the, in, in, in a manner that is really works very well and is the proof of the concept that we want to do. With this, we try to, you can see that uh, the pre-dose that the contrast has been given, you can see there are many lesions is not visible, but in the post-dose in the 40 minutes and 120 minutes, you can see that there are many, many lesions are very visible. And that is the beauty of the another type of system that we work for the diagnostic application. With this, you can see that Defense Research and Development Organization has given funding, corporate authority has given up money to develop this center, and of course, this collaboration with the University of Missouri working together, uh, certainly we can really exploit many of the pain and chloride at your center that will be very uh, useful for the medicinal application. With this, I close my talk and open for the discussion. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your commendable uh, presentation. Uh, was really fantastic. So now it's the time over to Professor Lawlit Singh. Yes, sir. good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, is there any questions? And this one I have already posted in our chat group. Also, if there is any questions, please type it in the Q and A section. Or if somebody wish to talk with our honourable speaker, uh, we may promote you to the panelists and you can have an interaction. Uh, thank you, sir. That was a very nice talk. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Kameshwar Rao, uh, Director ACRAM, he is in the attendees list. And uh, if you can uh, put him in the panelist then uh, you might also want to interact with the speaker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Madam, can you please repeat the name? Uh, Kameshwara V. Rao. Uh, v. Kameshwara. Ekrem. V. Kameshwara Rao. He is in the attendees list. Can you see Lolit in your panel? Suraj, can you see, please? Yeah. 
सर आई कैन सी देवकर सर यस सर आई कैन सी बट एक्चुअली आई एम नॉट हो सो आई कैन नॉट प्रमोट सूरज सूरज कैन यू प्लीज डू इट Can you post your question, Kameshwar Rao, in the chat box so I can answer uh, by writing? I don't. Maybe I can send mail. Anyone can connect Kameshwar Rao. Is is attending with VK? Yeah. Uh, but are you able to listen to sir? I am Kameshwar. Oh, I can see it in the chat box. Oh, yes, now? yes. Now, now, now I think it is promoted. Yes. Now audible now. Yeah. 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 Please, uh, please, sir. Uh, I just would like to have one question, if uh, permitted. Yes, yeah. please. So, uh, one thing is that you are using Ethereum and then uh, uh, Dutyium and Copper. Dutyium, yeah. Dutyium, uh, and then uh, uh, and among these three things, uh, the, the, but which will be the best? Is it based on the stability constants of the uh, the uh, what with the molecule or a, or uh, the or any uh, other is? Based? There are a couple of parameters that we take in account, Dr. Rao. Yes. First, that uh, we try to see imaging with the something which is of the short length. That's why we take the gallium 68, right? And that is the again plus three oxidation step. Then we go to the yttrium plus three that doesn't change the binding constant. This is very strongly binds because they also fall in the same category. Yttrium is the first elements in the length nine eighteen nine. We talk that, but is located in the in the transition metal. But the lanthanide comes from there. Okay. So what is what is happening is that the binding constant is almost parallel. In the only the half life of the nucleide is longer. So for example, some of the tumor we have to irrigate for a longer time. Then we try to take the lutetium. Lutetium is easily available. That is not coming with something called the cold carrier. And that's the advantage to get very high specific activity. So then we are not contaminating with some other nuclei from where the isotopes are extracted, either the the the, the purified. In yttrium case, always some contamination is there, and there is the targetry for this one. That when you see the pathway for yttrium versus ruthenium, this ruthenium is the longer. So then you can penetrate in the solid tumor even much better way compared to the yttrium. So that's why we try to take the lutetium 127 when we want to treat something like the solid tumor, which is the penetration because homogeneity is not there. That's why we take it. The one, uh, uh, the one more question I got it or doubt I got it that you are using the antibodies so that this whole molecule will be able to reach to the target. Yeah. Am I right? Yes. So what we do is that an antibody. When we try to visualize this tumor with these small molecules, the epitope of the antibody, because of the fast clearance to see it, because the kinetics is fast, clearance is fast. When we introduce the antibody, we just wanted to introduce the retention time at the tumor site. Mm. So what we do is that when we take the antibody as a bigger molecule, we want to see that the kinetics and retention is at least for three days. And then you can give the radiation, and also it can be a synergistic effect in the inventory. And that's why we, we take the antibody. But nonetheless, you can take even a small fraction, but you have to give a many fractionated dose. Besides that, also since it's a big molecule, then you will be also irradiating the bloods and other organ because the excretion is also very slow. What we try to do in this scenario, we try to do the two-step targeting. What we do is that. We try to inject a small hepatin as a small molecule that goes and binds to the tumor, and then we try to see inject the antibody which is not radio level that recognizes the hepatin either the epitope and goes bind on the tumor site. So that's why retention time increases. And the best example for this is the Evidin biotin system. So biotin is never injected, goes bind to the something, then you inject the scapular bead, and then either scapular bead you inject first and then you inject the biotin. Level one, it goes binds, and you can increase the retention. Oh, oh, thank you very much for the. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So, is there any more uh, questions, or if any of you wish to speak with our honourable speaker?
you don't see anything in the chat box so maybe uh, i do not yeah. yeah no question i do not see any in any questions in the chat if any of you a difficulty to access the q and a section you can type in the chat also we will take up the questions I think there is no more questions. Yes. Uh, in chat box, I also I don't see in the chat box uh, any question right now. But we can wait for a couple of minutes if any question pops up. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. No, no issues. So why not Professor Divakar can ask some question in between till that? What's about that? <laughs> yeah, so yes. Yes, sir, Divakar, sir, please. It's a nice presentation, sir. And uh, of course, we are looking for some kind of the collaboration and all that. So uh, yeah, yeah. of course, uh, I was uh, just uh, thinking that uh, the, the designing of the molecule when you are doing this uh, with uh, different, uh, you know, the radioisotopes, you have used it, of course, uh, based on the whatever the half-life period and all that beta emitters, beta positive or beta negative. So, uh, sir, the when you are binding this, uh, the, uh, the organic molecule with this the metal ions, the stability, of course, uh, Professor Dr. Rao has already asked that uh, the stability is an important aspect. But at the same time, on the cell, it is going to bind. And from there, the release and all that, how you are, you know, all these things you are taking into account when you are, you know, finally designing the molecule. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, uh, nice way to, uh, you know, design these molecules. What we do is that we have a couple of challenges in the beginning to, to, to design it. First thing is that, we, you know that the critical stability constant by A. Martin, the book is a, yes, a Bible for that. So we take from this, but that all stability constant by uh, Professor A. Martin, that whatever we get is in, in, in a chemical environment. That is one thing. So anything that binds, there is no challenge to the metal ion. From the stability point of view, the stability point of view is the complex constant that we talk about uh, when we are determining the ML values. Okay. So what we try to do is that we challenge under physiological environment where uh, proteins are there, enzymes are there, different fluids are there to see that still stability constant in the same manner. So we cast a very long gel for that. And with a different time interval challenging in the protein, we try to do the electrophoresis. And by doing and cutting and counting, we know that our molecule is stable as it is taken by the protein. This is the second step that we do to qualify. Third step, what we do is that we try to take the a milliliter of serum, knowing the fact in one milliliter of serum, what is the concentration of protein. So mm -hmm. our molecules should not exit, exit, uh, uh, exit more than, uh, there should not be more concentration than the existing protein in the one milliliter of serum. So for example, if I have to give a nanomolar, then I'll say I, I have to think about the picomolar concentration. Otherwise, the protein where I'm sending the molecule, they will get aggregated. If they get aggregated, then our main objective is not going to achieve. This is the third part, what we do is. The other part that you were asking that, that when it goes and binds to the site, there is what is the stability. So that also we calculate that how long I want to keep it there. So we try to see that metabolizable linker we introduce between the biological molecules and our organic matter which is holding the metal ions. And knowing the fact that where I'm sending, what will be the concentration of enzyme after three years, three, three, three hours, either three days, either four days. And then when concentration comes out, metabolizable linker cleaves it, and my radio ligands comes out being a small molecule. So all these parameters we take in account when we design it. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. I think uh, we don't have any more questions. Uh, can see in the chat as well as in the Q and A section. Maybe Kiran Mala something. Maybe she is having some from our DRP board. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, another is that uh, we have the recorded sessions are there. And those interested uh, uh, researchers uh, can always. Uh, if you if they wish then uh, the recorded uh, this year you, now it's also in the youtube live so the recorded video links we can share it uh, but now so just uh, one yes, question one. is there from yes, sir, uh, yes, sir. Dr. Wait. yes 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 and uh, dr kiran mala may like to ask something uh, sir uh, overall that was a very nice uh, presentation with lots of images uh, i hope uh, all the participants participants particularly those who are from chemistry background they might have uh, benefited from your uh, lecture today uh, sir uh, uh, the book which is uh, which you are uh, presenting uh, sir uh, have you uh, published uh, somewhere or have you patented so uh, most of the paper that most of the work that i have presented here they are published Either they are patented, except some of the uh, the work that I have reported in this is from the literature where I have quoted that taken from the literature. So this is the basically uh, the work that whatever I have presented we have published it. Yes. Okay. Also patented we have European and US patent on this one. Indian patents also we have, and uh, some of the work that we have not published yet that is also uh, in the process of uh, publication. And this I have taken it from the literature that whatever exists, that some of the images and some of the work that I have quoted that out. And that's why I've given the bottom curse of that uh, author. Thank you, sir. Very sir, uh, nice presentation. Thank you. Okay, sir. One question uh, I have it has come in the, our chat box uh, from the Dr. Bed Prakash Singh Ji. Uh, that the only ligands are studied. For activities or only complex are studied? Uh, so both are studies we do first for the ligand, uh, which is going to bind to the receptor to know that what is the binding constant of the moiety which recognizes the receptor. Then when we put the metal and we do the DFT for that one. So that DFT calculation says that what is the binding constant also. But besides that, we do the titrometric with using the cold metal ion to know that what is the binding constant to determine that different pKs and uh, mm -hmm. dissociation and different function of the pH. So that is also a study uh, in simulation as well as in experiment. So when we, when we do the simulation, we know that is binding with the receptor. When mm -hmm. we do the computation, also we try to see that it is uh, uh, binds with the function of the pH, either the pK and the dissociation. After that, we do the receptor binding to know that that whatever we have studied in simulation by using the software that also proves on the cell line and the receptor isolated. So we try to do all this ex vivo simulation and then finally the studies at the real time, individually as well as uh, radio ligand. Yeah. Not only radio ligand, but even bioconjugations. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I hope uh, it has clarified the matters. Mm. Uh, sir, then shall we uh, go for, sir, uh, as there is no more any questions? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yes, please go ahead. So, uh, so it's my privilege to propose the board of thanks uh, for the, today's uh, technical seminar. Uh, as as uh, in the at the beginning uh, we have already it has been already stated by the, our honorable uh, the professor devakar tiwari sir that uh, the in association with the drdo and the mizoram university uh, we are conducting a technical series a seminar series in the com uh, in the commemorate of the 75 years of the independence of azadika amrita mahotsav in related with this uh, uh, event, uh, events we have been conducting a various technical uh, series or talks and this is the second talks so today 
I would like to thanks to the, our honorable speaker, the Professor A.K. Mishra, the director of the Institute of Nuclear Medicine and Allied Science, DRDO, Delhi, for sparing his valuable time with us and highlighting the, all the his research finding. And he also just now he has just said that the most of the work which he has presented are of the, the patented one. So clearly the research findings has been highlighted the how the things has been going on with the integral with the uh, cancer activities, the how the chemicals has been developed and all the things like that has been highlighted. Thank you very much, sir. At next, I would like to thanks to the Director General uh, Technology Management, DRDO DGTM, uh, SB Srivastav, sir, uh, for his sparing his time with us and encouraging us to conduct the such kind of the technical series with in association with Mizoram University and uh, DRDO. The next to the, our honorable vice chancellor, the professor KRS Sambasiba Rao, uh, who is always uh, within the backbone to support the conducting of the online webinars and the series of the technical talks uh, in related with the, the various topics. Thank you to the sir. And then now I would like to thanks to the our the director the professor uh, dr uh, siri kk pathak sir uh, the, uh, for the sparing his uh, time with us for encouraging to conduct the seminar and i also like to thanks to the madam kiran mala from the office of the D, uh, dftm uh, for being always been associated with the mizoram university uh, and for conducting the various events and all those things like that and uh, at uh, last uh, I would like to thanks to the, all the participants uh, from the DRDO and uh, all the participants from the various parts of the country uh, for their valuable kind attentions for the, uh, and the, attending the, our seminar throughout the sessions. Uh, and if any uh, query or if any of you wish to know more about uh, the things, the recorded videos, which I have said that the link can be shared with you. Uh, at the same time, also, uh, it can be if any questions are there, then we can pass to the, our honorable speaker, uh, the Dr. A.K. Misra, sir, uh, the director of the uh, this INSM AS uh, and the DRDO New Delhi uh, for any queries related. Uh, with this, uh, thank you very much, sir, for your uh, sharing your valuable time with the Mizoram University uh, and uh, and all the participants. And uh, we would like to, at last, we'd like to thanks to the all the, the support from the DRDO uh, and the which for extending to conduct the joint venture with the series of the technical series of the talks. Uh, with this word, uh, uh, we will come to the end of the these today's technical sessions. Thank you very much. So before Thank this, I'd much. like to hear anything. Thank you very much for the invite. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're wonderful. Thank, you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. May I out? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> So now I think we can end when